Hello, this is a mini lecture on how to detect and handle missing data in a data set. So what is missing data? Well, it is more common than you would think. In fact, it's very rare to have a data set that doesn't have missing data in it in a real research study. If you're doing animals, you might have, you know, the rat died. If you are using equipment, it's not uncommon that equipment might malfunction and you were trying to get blood pressure, but the blood pressure machine didn't work properly that day. Um, if you're asking, you know, your participants to answer questions, they might refuse to answer or skip questions on a questionnaire if it's on paper. Or occasionally someone in the research lab will goof up and lose the data or collect it improperly. One of the big questions is whether there is a pattern to the missing data, and that's very important to understand because non-random missing data can affect the generalizability of your results in your study. So how do you find it? Well, you want to find out whether or not your missing data is random. So there are a variety of ways to do this. One of the ways is to code your participants um, and you can get SPSS to count things for you and tell you whether or not things are missing or not. Um, it's, it's kind of complicated and it depends on every data set. So I'm not going to go through all of that, but just suffice to say, if you need to look at missing data in a real data set, you add a variable for each participant and you might code it, for instance, zero being none missing, one being missing data, or you could, that would just be a you know, a binary code, you could also scale it, meaning zero missing, one thing missing, two things missing, three, thing, three things missing, that sort of thing. And that helps you locate things and understand what it is that you're looking at. Um, and then you can test for differences in important variables between those with no missing data and those that do have missing data. So particularly for your independent and dependent variables, you want to make sure that there's not a pattern on the missing data, that there's not either a correlation or a predictive value to having missing data. Um, SPSS does have a function called missing values analysis. Pretty much everybody in psychology agrees that this is not actually a good way to do missing values analysis, but you can go deeper into that if you want to in your future. For the sake of my course, you don't need to understand that. Your Mertler and Veneta text has some nice notes on missing data and what to do with it. And if you need to get further, the Tabachnik and Fidel optional text for my class has even further information. You can, um, borrow that book from me as well. What do you do with your missing data? Well, um, one option is just to leave it missing. Sometimes you have to. You don't have a way to either estimate or um, go back and fill it in, and you just have to leave it missing. If you do that, the cost is that that participant will not be a part of your study just because, you know, one bit of data. So even if one piece of data is missing on the person, they they are kicked out of the study um, and not included in your analysis. So that might make sense if, say, you're trying to look at the effects of age on something and you don't have their age um, and you have no way to get that information anymore, um, then they're just not going to be in your study. There's not really a way to estimate that. But if you give them a scale, such as the Beck Depression Inventory, and say they skip one question on the Beck Depression Inventory, what you probably would do is add up the total score of what they answered on the BDI, find out what their individual mean score was, and replace the missing item with the individual mean score. So their total skill score is meaningful. It's the same scaling as everybody else in the study, but you're estimating it based on their other question, you know, answers to questions of what that individual person's missing score would be. This is considered the best. It's got the gold star next to it there, um, the best way to estimate missing data because it is case-wise. So it's by individual person. Another way is to do variable-wise mean. This is easier. SPSS will do it in a quick click. Um, you don't actually have to kind of hand calculate this, but it's not as good because it is the sample's mean. It is not that individual person's mean. So it's okay, but it's, you know, second best. Um, if someone's missing an entire scale or, a, you know, a full measurement, um, you can kick them out of the study. You can replace with variable-wise scale mean. Um, there are more complicated ways to estimate these things in more complicated modeling things beyond what we're going to do in this course. So just be aware that these things do exist. 
But if people are missing more than half their data, it begins to be hard to justify keeping the participant in your study. You know, so if you ask them the BDI five times and you've got a participant that only answered it two times out of the five, well, then it's really hard to include them in the study at all. And it's kind of a, a standard. Some people will set more strict standards. You know, they need to give 90 percent of their data or they're or they're kicked out, things like that. The main thing that's important is, one, there's not like a set standard in the field of exactly what to do. And this is like the only way. Case-wise mean, scale mean is a good conservative way to do it, but overall there's not really a standard way. So whatever you do, report what you did, work with your committee or your co-authors on the issue um, when you face this question. Then I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of SPSS and missing data. There is a YouTube video that I created that shows you how to kind of locate and determine how much missing data you have and where it all is. But you can see here's a, a screenshot of SPSS and, uh, you know, you've got an empty cell there. That's your obviously missing data um, to to look at there. And then you also have, if you look there on line three, you have a zero under gender um, and male and female are already, are already obvious there. So what is zero? So this is where you really do need to know your own sample. Um, is zero mean they answer the question other? And this is people that are in some kind of other category other than traditional male and female identity? Um, or is this a, actually meaning missing and the person who entered the data just put zeros in when there was missing data um, and didn't leave the cell blank? So that's important for you to know and uh, to code your SPSS properly to let it know what missing values are in your data sets because it'll treat that zero as though it was a whole nother group. It won't know that, that, that you know, zero doesn't mean anything. Um, so SPSS isn't smart that way. It won't be able to read your mind. You have to tell it for each variable what the missing values are if it's not just a blank cell. Okay. Hope this is helpful to you.